Since he was born, Louis Drax has been in hundreds of accidents, but he survived them all. His own birth was an accident, and when he was only four months old, a lamp fell on him. He's been bitten by spiders, stung by bees, got electrocuted, had gotten food poisoning several times, not to mention a variety of diseases like meningitis. But this boy survived everything, and so his mother Natalie calls him an angel. It looks like Louis has nine lives like a cat, but maybe his ninth year is his last life. On Louis's ninth birthday, he with his mom and dad Peter, goes on a picnic nearby a cliff. But Louis ends up falling into the sea. Inside the cold water, a mysterious voice tells him that this is his ninth life. Some moments later, Detective Dalton arrives with her team, they successfully rescue Louis and Natalie, but they can't find Peter. Louis is then taken to the hospital, where Dr. Yannick tries his best to save him, but unfortunately, Louis dies. However, when his body is taken to the morgue, Louis starts shaking, so doctors bring him back into the emergency room. Somewhere else, Dr. Alan Pascal is giving a TED Talk speech about his book named Coma. He tells his story that how he used to sleepwalk as a child, and how he is still looking for the lost dimension the human brain goes in. After this, he gets a call from Dr. Yannick, who wants him to help him treat Louis. Alan gets to know that Louis was dead for two hours and now he's in coma with many broken bones and damaged organs. Alan meets Natalie and promises her that he will bring Louis back, claiming that the boy himself is a miracle. While he's in coma, Louis's mind explores some old memories while talking with the mysterious voice. As Louis was a troublesome boy, Natalie was always protective of him, and so she sent him for therapy to Dr. Perez. Louis tells Perez how he feels because Perez told him this will be their secret. But Louis not always answered every question Perez asked him, like when Louis said he thinks he will never grow up to become a man, but never explained why he thinks like that. And when Perez asks Louis if he gets into accidents on purpose, Louis stays silent and then changes the topic. Louis knows that Perez hypnotizes some of his patients because he read the doctor's book, and wonders if Perez would hypnotize him or not, as he is a normal child not a mentally disturbed kid. Back in the present, Alan asks Yannick for the details of the accident, currently the police thinks that Peter pushed his son Louis into the sea and ran away, which is why an officer will be posted on the hospital's reception for the safety of Louis. Alan talks to Louis whenever he can, asking him to come back as everything is alright. Dalton comes by to share what she had learned about Lewis so far. Lewis used to go to therapy, and was undisciplined at school, he had no friends, and so was called the wacko boy by the others. Alan points out Lewis's history with accidents, but Dalton reveals that his previous doctors think the boy caused all the accidents on purpose. But it's hard to believe for both of them because the accident started when Lewis was just a baby. Alan doubts if his father Peter was abusive or violent, but Dalton doesn't know about this yet. Afterwards, Alan goes for a walk with Natalie to make her feel better. While in Lewis's mind, his memories are flashing quickly, from happy moments like Natalie taking care of him and the family's visit to the aquarium, to bad memories like Natalie and Peter arguing. For the next few days, Alan tries to comfort Natalie whenever she comes by to see Lewis, but one evening, the mysterious voice reveals itself, it's a big seaweed monster who wants to hear Lewis's life story. This next story is about the time when Peter took him to a SeaWorld, where he accidentally bumped into Peter's ex-wife Caitlin, who got married and had three kids, and so Peter asked Lewis not to tell about this to his mother as she will not like it, and Lewis promises he wouldn't. But as soon as he got home, he told his mother about the incident, which created an argument between the two that Lewis tried to ignore. The next time he went to therapy, Lewis told Perez that he didn't keep the secret because he knew his parents will not get divorced just because of that incident, and that he knows Peter is not his real dad. Later, Lewis asked Peter why he quit boxing, so Peter explains he did it because he became a husband and then a father. At the present, Alan with his wife Sophie attends a party thrown by Yannick, he is surprised to see Natalie is there too, and just can't keep his eyes off her, but his wife Sophie notices this, who already believes that their marriage isn't doing so well. And when Alan finally gets to talk with Natalie, Sophie interrupts them, and the two gets into an argument later on their way back to home. Next day, Natalie brings Lewis's hamster to the hospital, hoping this would make him recover faster, while animals are not allowed, Alan decides to let the hamster stay with Lewis. Natalie says that Lewis loves his hamster, but the truth is, this is his third hamster, because he killed the previous two. And when Perez asked him about it, Lewis told him about a secret rule which says that if you own a small pet and it lives for more than two years, then you are allowed to kill it. 
Perez was shocked to hear this and wanted to know from where he heard this, and then he begins asking Luis about his dad. Later, when Perez shares what he thinks about Luis, Natalie doesn't like his thoughts about her son, and decides not to send Luis to therapy anymore. Perez promised Luis he will never tell anyone about their secrets, but he told his mother Natalie, and since then Luis believes that all men are liars, and so as a punishment for betraying Luis, he sends Perez an envelope filled with hamster poop. Back in the present, this story is being heard by the seaweed monster, and he wants to know why Luis hates men so much, the boy replies that it was the men who did bad things to his mom. Meanwhile, Alan asks Natalie why she ended Luis's therapy with Dr. Perez, he is talking about the time before Luis fell off the cliff. Natalie explains that Perez was always suspicious of Peter and was trying to turn her against her husband, but now she doubts if Perez was right. As Alan is a good listener, she shares with him what happened at Luis's ninth birthday. At the picnic, Peter and Natalie got into an argument because Peter didn't like that she ended the therapy. Peter got aggressive and it scared Luis, who ran away to the edge. His parents went after him and tried to grab him, but in the struggle, Luis fell. Alan asks her if Peter had been violent before, but Natalie ignores the question and tells him that she has known Peter since she was 18, and so Peter is the only man she has ever been with. Alan thinks that Natalie deserves better and the two ends up kissing, but little Louis saw this from the hospital's window. Alan and the nurses rushes to check Louis, who is trying to say something, but unfortunately, the boy only whispers, my dad, before falling into coma again. Later, his mind remembers another story. The time when his parents separated, Peter came to say goodbye because he was leaving for a while to stay with his mother, in order to give Natalie some space. But he promises that he will always be there for his son. And while Lewis is recalling these old memories, Alan takes some tests to understand what happened, but finds nothing. So he continues with just talking, and reads Lewis his favorite book for the night, but then, he hears a noise, and then finds a trail of seaweed, spiders, and mud, which he follows, and finds the big seaweed monster but all of a sudden he wakes up sitting next to Louis. Some days later, Alan spends some time with Yannick, who notices that he's looking tired. Alan admits that he's not getting good sleep lately and his relationship with Sophie is getting worse, but Yannick asks if he's dating Natalie because everyone at the hospital knows about the kiss. But then he gets a call from Natalie, who asks for his help because she thinks that Peter had been in the house, and when he gets there, Natalie shows him the letter she found in the mailbox. The letter is written in childish handwriting and is signed by Louis. This is a warning from Louis, he writes that Natalie should stay away from Alan as he likes her, and men always hurt her, and if she doesn't listen, bad things will happen. They take the letter to the police, and after analysis by an expert, it is revealed that whoever wrote this wasn't using his dominant hand, probably to hide their identity, and so Dalton advises Natalie not to stay at her house for now, and since she doesn't have family or friends, Alan offers her a room in the hospital. But before leaving, Dalton advises Alan not to get together with Natalie for his own safety. Next day, Alan visits Perez, who is now working in a mental hospital. Perez admits that he used to think that Lewis caused the accidents intentionally, but now he thinks the other way. He shows Alan the letter with the hamster poop, in which Lewis wrote how much he hates him for betraying his secrets. So Alan also shows Perez a copy of the letter Natalie found in her mailbox, and after reading it, Perez confirms that this is exactly the way Louis talk, and if not him, then someone who knows him closely. Meanwhile, Louis revisits the memory of the day all of this happened. Peter came back from his mother's house just to celebrate his son's birthday and also brought the third hamster for Louis as a gift. On their way to the picnic, Peter shares that he wants to take Louis with him for his two weeks break, but Natalie doesn't like the idea, she asks him if he knows the way to the place they want to go, Peter is confident, but still is helped by Louis who guides him using a map, However, instead of a roadmap, Louis sees a map of his brain. Later, Sophie shows up at Alan's office, she hands him the letter she found in her mailbox and leaves, it's the same kind of letter that Natalie received and is a warning for Alan to stay away from Louis's mother. Dalton comes to investigate but Alan confirms that Louis can't write those letters as he's in coma, but then Dalton asks him what Natalie told him about what happened on Louis's ninth birthday, and she then reveals that Peter is not Louis's real father, also that when Louis was born, Natalie put him up for adoption. After they leave, Alan confronts Natalie that why she lied about having been with only one man in her entire life, Natalie gathers herself to reveal that Joe is the name of Louis's biological father, and when she was about to give birth to Louis, the process went terribly painful and it nearly killed them both, since then she feels like everyone hates her and Louis, but Alan is an exception. They get closer and make love. Back to Louis's memory, 
Peter was indeed angry on Natalie for ending the therapy, but he avoided arguing further just because it was his son's birthday. At the same time, outside his mind, Natalie is telling him the story about how she got together with Peter. It was around the time when Lewis met his first accident, Peter came to see Natalie, the hospital staff thought he's Natalie's husband, and they did got married after a year, because Peter never really loved Caitlin. Lewis can hear all of this, and can see it with his imagination too, he asks the seaweed monster why Natalie is whispering bullshit in his ear, so the monster takes him out to finally show him the truth. Meanwhile, the cops are making the hospital workers write on a paper to find who actually wrote those mysterious letters. But then, Peter's mother and Lewis's grandmother Violet comes to see her grandson, but she and Natalie hate each other and now are arguing. Alan talks with Violet in her office and gets to know that since Peter disappeared, Natalie has been stopping Violet from seeing Lewis. Peter has disappeared, but Violet is sure that he didn't do anything because Peter loves Lewis more than himself, in fact, Lewis is the only reason Peter stayed this long with a woman like Natalie. Peter really loved Caitlin, but then Natalie took him away with lies and manipulation. Violet believes that Natalie lied to Alan about her family and hardships she faced. But then Dalton comes with a bad news, they have found Peter's body inside a cave near the cliff. Back in Lewis's mind, the seaweed monster makes Lewis jump with him into the seawater, where they swim until they reach a dark cave, and inside the cave, it is revealed that the monster is no one but Lewis's dad Peter. Peter tells him his story about how much she loved Caitlin, but felt bad for a crying Natalie, who he thought needed him more, so he divorced Caitlin and married Natalie hoping he could make her smile, and when Lewis asks why Natalie is always crying, Peter explains she loves the feeling when people feel sorry for her and give her attention. Peter admits he loved Lewis more than anything in the whole world, a crying Lewis also admits that he loves him too and doesn't want him to die. Meanwhile in the morgue, the seaweed-covered body of Peter is going through an autopsy, it's already decomposed a lot, indicating that Peter has been dead for days, Peter fell into the water with Lewis, but the waves dragged him into the cave and that is why he had been so hard to find. The cop gets a message from the lab confirming that Peter didn't write those mysterious letters, for which they have a proof now. At the hospital, Alan wakes up after oversleeping, the nurse tells him that she didn't wake him up because he was sleepwalking, and while he was sleepwalking, he went to his desk and wrote a prescription, but he threw it in the trash before leaving. When Alan takes a look at that prescription, he's shocked to see the same handwriting from the letters, this is prescribing Natalie some dangerous doses of insulin and chloroform. Alan goes to the police and together they confirm the nurse's story through the security cameras. He thinks Lewis is controlling his mind while he sleeps and is trying to tell them something, but Dalton thinks this is a crazy theory, as he hadn't known the family before the incident, and the fact that Peter and Lewis both fell off the cliff together can't be ignored, Dalton thinks Alan wanted to kill them both to get Natalie. Afterwards, Alan goes to meet Perez to ask if he ever thought that Natalie was involved in the accident, Perez also thinks this theory is crazy, but he still agrees to hypnotize Alan to confirm it. At the hospital, Perez helps Alan with the hypnosis and helps him find a place in his mind where he becomes Lewis. Perez requests to speak to Lewis, and Alan replies in the voice of Lewis. Perez asks what actually happened that day, so Lewis finally reveals what happened at the picnic, he had blown the candles, and he wished that Peter was his real dad so he can stay with him forever. After this, Natalie tried to give Lewis some candy, but she wouldn't share with Peter, she even accuses him of being drunk. This makes Peter suspicious, he begins to check if the candies are safe or not, he indeed became aggressive but only because for his son's safety. That's when Lewis ran away in fear and was followed by Natalie, Peter also came and moved him away from the edge, and then he confronted Natalie that why she wants to hurt their son, but Natalie pushed him off the cliff. She then looked at Lewis and did what she always wanted to do. The truth is finally revealed, Natalie was the one causing Lewis's accidents on purpose, from the very beginning. Alan wakes up, and at the same time, Lewis's heart stops beating, but Alan manages to bring him back with a defibrillator. Some time later, Alan moves to his own apartment because he is separated from Sophie. Afterwards, he goes to Perez's mental hospital, where Natalie has been admitted because she has Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which means she wants attention by creating problem for others, and in the beginning, she was hurting Lewis directly, but as Lewis grew up he started getting into accidents on his own, to get love and care from Natalie. Currently, Natalie is responding well to the treatment, and is also pregnant with Alan's child. Violet is now taking care of Lewis. But in his mind, the boy wonders if being in coma is bad or not, as he can stay with his dad here forever and be happy also, 
But his dad wants him to wake up because he can see much more beautiful things in the real world. Louis remembers the day Peter left, and the hug he gave to his father. And with this, he opens his eyes. This is where the movie ends. Subscribe to the channel if you love movies. Like and share the video. We appreciate it. See you again.